Welcome to Sales Talk, the TV show where we talk about all things sales. And today we have got a really special episode for you. Here we're talking about the one thing, the one thing that you try to avoid doing. And that is that thing called cold calling. Or as we'll get to know it more as we go through this episode, prospecting. Um, so look, why is cold calling important? I think it's really, it's really key that we recognize that cold calling is part of your sales approach or should form part of your sales approach. You know, one of the many channels that you use. So you, know, you could be using social media, you could be using emailing, you could be using um, you know, telephones. Now, part of all of this is about cold calling. It just depends how you, you frame it. It doesn't have to be just a telephone call. But we will focus in, in this episode around the telephone and some of the stigma and some of the challenges that this brings us as sellers. Uh, so why, why do we do cold calling? Well, the simple hard truth is it generates new prospects for us. It is by default and by statistics, the most successful outreach activity that a sales company or seller can do. In the episode today, we show um, through our guest speaker how you can increase your likelihood of putting good opportunities in and creating more successful sales outcomes. Yet why else is it important? Well, buyers buy this way. Buyers are actually becoming more uh, or are receptive to answering the phone if you catch them at the right time. I've already mentioned it's part of a multi-channel. Just find where cold calling or prospecting fits in your sales approach. But of course, like all things, one of the most critical parts is that you dedicate the time to do it. So we're going to watch uh, uh, an interview that I had most recently with Kathy Ford of the Solutions Agency, where she shares some of her experiences, some of the things she's observed over her time in the industry and gives us a few really good sales tips as guidance. Enjoy the episode and I'll see you back here when it's finished. Hello everybody and welcome to Sales Talk, the TV show where we talk about everything sales. And I'm here today with Kathy Ford of The Solutions Agency. Hi, Kathy. Hi. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Well, thanks for coming over to see us You're at welcome. the TV studios. Um, just so everybody can find out a bit about you, tell them all about your business. Right. The Solutions Agency was set up in 2002, and I actually make use of my skills, experience, and expertise at senior level in the retail industry, and I have no problem picking up a phone to a main board director or whoever, because I've been doing it for years without realising it. So uh, my business will be 18 years old on the 1st of October 2020, and I enjoy helping people to develop their businesses through telephone marketing and sometimes managing their existing accounts on, on an ongoing basis. Fantastic. So, so what we're talking about here, to use the Sales Mindset Coach syllabus, and I know you're going to challenge me around this very soon, is cold calling. You are an expert and offer services to help businesses when it comes to generating leads through cold calling. Generating leads, yes. I hate, loathe and detest the term cold calling. Yes, some of it is cold. Uh, some of it is warm, some of it is following things up that have been sent out prior, either by email or in the post. Um, but I, it gives the wrong impression when you say cold calling because certain industries over the years have spoilt it for people like me who like to do things pop properly and professionally. Yeah, and it's really good because yeah, through the through the uh, the Sales Mindset Coach syllabus and through our Facebook group that you're a member of I and am. contribute to, um, we're trying to overcome this mindset about cold calling and clearly the stigma or the perception that it has. And you know, there are people in the group that call this warm calling. I saw your physical reaction when we first called it cold calling. So there is a real, there is a real sort of yin and yang here. There's a real sort of 
polar end of people's emotions and reactions to a phrase, a word. And people would have heard me talk in the past about the stigma that there is in sales. And I think a lot of it is very well deserved because of, as you've just suggested, the bad behaviour of some. And, and in this area of outreach, trying to generate opportunities, um, we probably have all experienced personally bad behaviour from somebody. I would agree with that, yeah, yes. That has made us kind of go, oh, I don't want to be associated with doing that activity, so I don't. So what what, what has happened in the industry, the, the years that your business has been been going you've probably seen a lot of negative behavior that's fed this stigma what what goes on what's the problems around it people don't take into consideration that people might not want what that particular company is offering and it's businesses like double glazing that um, were quite hard sell, and I mean hard sell. Mm. And in 2004, in June 2004, when I just got my business where it wanted to be, they brought the TPS, Telephone Preference Service, in. And then followed that up a couple of years later by CTPS, which is the corporate version. Right. And <clears throat> if people want to register not to receive calls, they can do doesn't stop everybody and it still frightens me to death the amount of marketing people who do not understand or are bothered concerned about the fact that they could end up with quite a hefty fine I mean I wouldn't like five thousand pounds off the bottom yeah, my bottom line yeah. and the way I got round it was one of my clients at the time was in telecoms and he rang up and he said what are you going to do about it Kathy I said I know it's going to cost me I think it was four or five thousand pounds for the database. Then I'd have to screen to see if it was on the register. I thought, I'd never get any work done. He said, It's not a problem, Kathy. I can offer you a solution to that. And my business line in my office has a filter on it. And if a company is on that register or either of those registers, it will tell me. So it's quite simple. You don't call it, you just move on to the next yeah. one. Some of my clients, one in particular who I worked for for about four or five years until he retired, he actually used to say to me, if somebody's on that list, Cathy, I'll give you some headed paper. Will you put a letter together? Acknowledging the fact that they are on the register and don't wish to receive un unsolicited calls. Mm. And he actually got work from that. But mm. some people just say, oh, I'll not bother. I'll just walk, walk, well. For the want of a, a letter and a, a, a stamp, to me, if you've got, if you've spent a fortune, which you can do on buying data. Buying data, yeah. Because when you are buying data, you need to be as specific as you possibly can. Mm. There are, again, there are some charlatans out there. Um, I always advise people to go to one particular company. They might have their own contacts. But be specific. What are you? What type of companies do you want to speak to? What type of companies do you want to work with? Where are they? What size of company? And a lot of them will, will be able to take it down to exactly what you need. Yeah, I mean that. that I mean that's really. I mean, there's, a, there's so much in that. What you've just framed. We speak in the syllabus very much about know who your ideal client is. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think this point here that you're you're describing, uh, that you can buy data, and that data is a, is a is a repository of your ideal clients. Therefore, the outreach call that you make is reaching somebody that is more than likely going to value or respond positively to the solution or product you're offering. Yeah. And, and that's that's really important, right? Because at the beginning of this, you, you beginning of that sort of introduction, you mentioned that so many people still just phone anybody. They do. It's a why why does that happen? Because they suddenly decide, oh, I'm going to. 
they might just take a number of companies out of Yellow Pages or off Google or wherever, yell.com, and just pick up the phone. Mm. They could very well end up with a minimum of a £5,000 fine off the bottom line. The people who are making the calls. People who are making the calls, yes. Right. And even if a company has an overseas call centre, which is a different subject altogether, and they they are UK based, they must adhere to all the legislation here. Oh, so that's an interesting point because I guess we've all had our dinner times interrupted from yes. overseas call centres, and they you you pick up the phone or you take the call, and there's this silence, and. If they bother to speak to you, it's interesting. But then they hang it up. It's just a... Well, what it is, they use um, some technology where and a dialer where they're dialing a few numbers at the same time. Right. And it's whoever answers first yeah. is spoken to. Yeah. I, personally, I don't like that. I, I don't work like that. Um, it's it's It's... It's just wrong to me. And, and all of this feeds that stigma. It right? does, it does it, feed the it stigma, yes. It all feeds yes. the stigma because you've described already in an environment here where you can buy data that is relevant to your ideal client. You can, you can, you can opt in or out of being on that list. Uh, and, and therefore, the chances, if you are needing to do cold calling, uh, prospecting, prospecting for, your, for, your, for your business success and your growth, you can do it in a far more deliberate um, measured way a measured way which should feed back into your confidence right that's right yeah i mean it's really interesting to hear you say this because i often wonder why they phone me and why they phone me at these strange times of the day how how do you kind of manage that how, what's the what's the what is there any kind of tips and hints not best practices we come to that at the very end but just around around when people call and operationally the right times personally my business doesn't make any calls um you, before 10 o'clock in the morning right because people have got to get into work do their emails do this do that do the other they um monday morning i tend not to make any calls at all because you never know what mm -hmm. people have had to deal with over the weekend what issues have hit the fan in the business late on Friday that have got yeah. to be sorted out yeah. on, a, on a Monday morning. And I usually finish about four o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's really, I mean, that's really fascinating as well, because we talk again in the syllabus about the, knowing the buyer's buying journey and, and, and actually recognising that, you know, everybody's busy and Mondays is a bad day. Uh, maybe while they're setting their day up is a bad time. So knowing when your buyer is likely to answer the telephone call is is a good thing, right? Is is an important thing. And if you're on that list of people that I've already identified as my ideal ideal client, and I do pick up the phone, that becomes far more relevant and more likely to lead to a successful a successful outcome. And that outcome is probably the piece that I thought might be worth going to now. Where do you think people... Can I just mention something else? Yeah. There's also the fear of rejection. Yeah, yeah. And I want to and I want to come I want to come on to I want to come on to that because I think that's a really really important piece in our mindset. It so, is. so let's so let's do that while we're th while we're there. To, uh, expand on expand on that because we put a post in the in the uh, in the sales mindset group recently. And there was a lot of comments about, about rejection and about the fear of that. Where does that come from? Nobody likes to be rejected, do they? Mm. I don't like to be rejected. I don't do it for my own business. My business comes through word of mouth and networking. Mm. Um, but it's easier to take on behalf of somebody else. If it's your business and it's your baby that you've grown from, a small seed mm. up to whatever size you want to take your business to. Well, what's what's wrong, what's wrong with it? And that's, I would say, the 
most used phrase to me when people are talking to me about why I don't do it. Why I don't do it. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that rejection, that rejection. It's personal. It's inevitable though, isn't it? You are going to get some rejection. Yes. Not everybody's going to want what you do every time, you know, we'd all be doing it, wouldn't we? So even in the, even if they're in your idle client, you've matched their buying journey, you are still going to get rejection. Yes. Now, again, people often say to me, I can't get past the PA. (laughs) Or my answer to that is, have you spoken to the PA? Oh, no, I want to speak to such and such. Mm. The PA, if they're doing their job properly, yes, they're a gatekeeper, but they will know what's going to make their life easier, what would make the company bit more smoother and slicker Mm. and very importantly which buttons to press to get the boss to say yes so i think this is this is this is this is gold dust for sellers out there watching this right because there's this whole debate that's gone on about what 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 a tragedy in the industry that pas gatekeepers now exist yes you know we've created an environment in sales where this role has been introduced to screen us out because we've forgotten the importance of adding value and Absolutely. And, and and being clear about you know, what problems we're solving. So, but but actually, you're talking about whether it's nurturing a relationship, but you're certainly talking about using the gatekeeper or the PA in your sales approach and your yes. sales methodology. Yes, I will often say to somebody, "Can I speak to?" So they're not available. Can I have a word with their PA if they're right. available? That's, I mean, that, that, I think that's really great advice because I so I kind of I, we, we've got a we've got a blog about the eight, eight tips to get past the gatekeeper, and one of them, well, one of them is recognise the gatekeeper has a specific role, absolutely, and their job is to filter things out. And the second one is, without sort of building up and investing so much time, make them your friend. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, it's, it's really great to hear that, and I think that's really important. So joining those two things together. The question I was going to ask before we went into that frustration, and I think that's really important, is do you think people are realistic with the outcomes they expect from cold calling? Prospecting, excuse uh, me. Yes, prospecting. <laughs> um, they can be. They think because you say um, you've done so many calls and I've, I've got nothing, well, you can make an awful lot. But then when you get the one that turns into business... Mm. Um, it can be very beneficial. I once was extremely successful for one guy on the first call I made for him. Unusual, though. Very unusual, yeah. very unusual. And he... Um, stra- oh, Cathy, oh, when can he come in? I've got a major problem. That one job paid me for three hours a week for 18 months. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It is unusual, but it can happen. What's... You do have to make a lot of calls. Yeah. It's, it's like networking. Mm. People go to networking events and they're disappointed if they go, don't go home with a, a load of, of referrals for work. Well, it's not quite as easy as that. A lot of it is getting to know people, like them and trust them. Uh, and this is absolutely Which right. is the same as, in, in my experience anyway, and the way I look at it, that is very important. You've got to get it right with people. I mean, I, I love that philosophy behind behind this because because it, it is about no, uh, no like trust. And and I think the comparison between at a networking event, do you expect to sell things, will resonate with so many people watching this because we've spoken in the syllabus again about networking is not about necessarily Selling. making the sell where you're there. It's about taking that next logical step. Getting to know people, let people know what you do, which is what prospecting is. So with that prospecting, the primary goal that you would have is to take it to the next logical step? Is that how it works? Yes, yes, yes. If somebody is really not interested, I've been doing this a long time and I've been doing it, as I said earlier on, for years without realising what I was doing. Um, If somebody's not interested, move on. Mm. So many people try to force things. Uh, I once had a meeting and eventually did some work with a chap who was a business advisor. 
And he'd been using a large company, invested an awful lot of money, got one particular appointment out of it, which has always stuck, stuck in my mind. He'd gone to a florist on a market. There is nothing wrong with selling flowers on a market in any way, shape or form, but the fit wasn't there. Mm. It wasn't qualified. What was the point? Mm. That guy had had to drive from his office an hour and a half to get to this guy and an hour and a half back. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm Time is money. It is, and I'm, smi I'm smiling because, you know, people that have been any of, of the Sales Growth Club live um, sales training workshops or taking the Accelerator program online, which is the Sales Mindset Coach product range, will recognize very early on in my sales funnel, Spankop, the seven-step sales process. The first one is filtering out suspects from prospects, making sure you're not wasting your time Absolutely. with that top of funnel stuff. And an agency like yours can help ensure that what's going into somebody's sales funnel is, is a qualified opportunity that matches your right, I, ideal client. They, you recognize their buying journey and they're a qualified opportunity. Yeah. So, so you're giving people a list of things that they, <coughs> that they can follow up? Well, if an appointment is set, by be it either telephone or usually face-to-face, I always say to them, if it's quite a while ahead, a couple of days before you're due to go, just ring. Or if you don't want to, ask me and I'll do it, just to confirm that everything okay. is ready. Okay. Um, so, so that's some appointment confirmation as well within that. Some people will ask for an email. Mm. That's fine. Um, when I'm working for a company that's got a number of employees, people will sometimes say, can you um, send me some information? Can you leave the telephone number? No, I don't leave my business telephone number. I have a contact in that office. Mm. Uh, and I will say to them, well, this is the head office number. If you are not, if I'm not in the office, speak to X, Y, Z, he or she. Mm. I'm knowing full well that I won't be in the office, but that person... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, I like the advice. I, I mean, I like the philosophy behind you know the solutions agency, uh, and I have to declare, you know, Kathy is not somebody that, that works. I, we work don't work together, but I, but I like the f f and you were going to say yet. I like, yes, I like, yeah, I like, absolutely. I like, yes, I like, you just read my mind. I, I, I did. <laughs> I, I like the philosophy of how you personalize. So just because it's a prospecting call doesn't mean that you can't build a personal approach to that. It isn't about numbers and a depersonalized service, which is, which I guess on my reflection is one of the things that I dislike when I get that intrusive phone call, that it doesn't feel as though it's unique or tailored or for me, it feels as though it's broad, almost impersonal, and, and, and something that they're just literally jumping onto the next one and there's no consideration or real care that, that there's a value piece I like here. to be able to make notes either on a contact management system or an Excel spreadsheet, not interested, not in, call back such a date. I've actually sat in my car and in car parks on a Friday afternoon when I used to be out with my parents. Sadly, I've no longer got my dad, so we don't <coughs> tend to do that as much now. But um, I'd be sat on a call because somebody would say, can you call me back on a Friday? Yeah. Not a problem to me, just do it on your mobile phone. Mm. And again, we live in a virtual world. People don't yeah. know that I'm sat in my office. I've worked for people on the South Coast. Yeah. Well, it's, 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 this is, I mean, and again, this is another really good point, isn't it? Because whilst we might have the perception that cold calling is a constant... Prospecting. Prospecting, uh, prospecting is a constant... Uh, you might see the syllabus change soon, folks, to say prospecting and not cold calling. But you know, whilst people might feel that the prospecting is a, is a constant activity, and actually for any business I would say it probably is, but the, but the medium of using the telephone doesn't isn't isn't solely and totally what you do, right? You've described it's a combination of things 
while we've been sat here. You've described that it's, it could be networking, it could be telephoning, it could be emailing. So it isn't just... Posting. It is, and posting, it isn't just about hitting because the phone. Because these days people get so much by email that they've not requested... It just ends up in a spam filter or it's just deleted straight away, as I think some of the people commented said, if they got a cold email, they Indeed. don't even read it, Indeed. which they, they might be missing out, which was why the client that said to me, send them a letter, mm. it worked for him. Yeah. I've heard this said in a few places that just, you know, letter writing is, is making a comeback because actually... The, the 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 owner of a company is much more likely to physically open an envelope, take a letter out and read it, than maybe answer the phone because they're being filtered by the gatekeepers or answer an email because it's in the spam folder. So or this, they're on the, this, or, or on, they're on, on the, the, the register and that you can't can't call them anyway. I, I, but if you do write, acknowledge that fact. It shows you've done it properly and professionally and done your homework. I love that. I love that. I mean, there has been so much value in, in this this episode of Sales Talk, um, Sales Talk. And I think I just want to give you the opportunity, if you would, to leave people with your top three tips. Firstly, I would say prepare, know your target market, get your data and make sure that it's you're ready to go. You've got. I personally don't like to use a script. Uh, you've got to know why, why you're ringing, what sets you apart, and a, very importantly, a list of frequently asked questions, and even more importantly, the answers to them, particularly if you're going to outsource it to somebody like me. Yeah, indeed. Uh, make sure you are compliant with all the regulations, TPS and CTPS filters, uh, which a lot of um, telecoms companies do these days, the cost is negligible. Um, I certainly wouldn't work without one. And the data protection and the GDP re GDPR regulations. Yeah. And finally, if you are not comfortable doing it, get an expert in like me. Yeah, I, I, I mean, they, I mean, what absolutely wonderful advice. And of course, if people who are watching this, they'll be watching it on uh, in the Facebook group, they'll be watching it on LinkedIn, they'll be watching it on the YouTube channel. There could be questions, and I'm sure, I'm sure if they're channeled correctly, you'd happily. I would happily talk to anybody. Fantastic. You never lose anything talking to people, even if they say, "Well, I'd rather do it in house." I'm happy to go in and mentor somebody and train somebody up. Yeah, fantastic. Done that on many an occasion. So just tell everybody once again in closing your business, where they can find you. My business is the Solutions Agency. The web website is www.solutionsagency.co.uk. There's only me in the business and that is the way it's going to stay. If you need any help or advice, please either email me at kathy at solutionsagency.co.uk or give me a call on 07818 044 768. Fantastic. Thank Cathy, you. thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. So thanks, Kathy. I mean, I, I hope you agree, but that, that was so much value in there. You know, Kathy, Kathy is someone that could, you could go to as your expert, as she describes. Well, what you could do is take a look at some of her blogs that we're going to be sharing in, in the Sales Mindset group. Um, so, Kathy, thanks ever so much, and we look forward to your further contributions to our sales journeys. Now, she gave you some amazing tips, and my place now really isn't to give more tips. I, I guess just to add one to that, remember that your existing customers are somewhere that you can go to to generate new opportunities. So you know, we talk about making a cold call, a prospecting call. Don't neglect your existing customers in your prospecting activities. We deal with uh, cold calling and prospecting and getting ready for sales at the Sales Growth Club Lives. Uh, we have a few more of those coming up this year. Uh, we've got one coming up in, in March and in April, and we'll share some details of that uh, just below the post here. It'd be great to see you there where we can help you with some of your mindset when it comes to prospecting and selling. So this has been a stunning, stunning uh, episode of Sales Talk. Please like it, please share it with your communities and get in touch with Kathy or myself if there's anything that interested you or more information you need around your sales journey. From us here at Sales Talk, thanks for watching.